Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. <laughs> Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com <laughs> to keep checking the audio levels here if you see me looking over don't forget you know this is not my first time with a microphone i'm gonna have to you know take some microphone classes go back to radio school is what they said we have to keep checking the audio levels it keeps screwing up we're gonna blame china we're going to blame palestine i think ukraine maybe but don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We love it when you like. The algorithm hates this anyways. You will like. You will subscribe. You're going to notice a lot of pointing, maybe. What I wanted to do, you see the head is shaved. You, what I wanted to do is re-gear, retool for the election season. I wanted to sort of forget about everything. Blank slate for the election. And we know that when elections are coming up, politicians like to pretend that you don't remember anything in the last few years. And this is what the first story is about. Um, CTV, a news company in Canada. They want you to forget everything. They want you to forget what they've said. They want you to forget what the last like three years were about. And I'm talking about the COVID times. And they got caught in a little finagle, I think you can call it. Um, where they're saying... Nobody ever said to eat bugs. Nobody ever suggested eating bugs. And it's really weird now that a conservative politician is suggesting that people eat bugs. And this is a video from them from the 25th of September. And this is what they had to say. BC Conservative leader John Rustad for comments he made suggesting children could be expected to eat bugs. Rustad made that claim and others last year in Victoria where he was a keynote speaker at a conference aligned with the Freedom Convoy. During his speech, Rustad applauded the... How dare he align himself with the Freedom Convoy, that bastard. ...trucker convoy and said climate policies, quote, take away our freedoms and make us more vulnerable to government control. He then mentioned an Ontario company that uses crickets to make pet food. The factory has been at the center of conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. This plant produces 40,000 tons of bug protein for human and animal consumption. 40,000 tons of bug, and there's a second plant that's now in the process of being built. We should not be expecting our kids to eat bugs. You know, in my experience, the challenge with children up to a certain age is preventing them from eating bugs. But, I mean, here's something that John Rustad and I can agree on. So let's put a hand across the aisle about uh, not forcing children to eat bugs. Uh, I do understand why he has to clarify his position on issues like this, uh, given the uh, remarkably weird stuff he's been saying. So weird. In my experience, in my experience with kids that weren't totally fabulous. So that's their position, right? He's, he's talking about people suggesting that to eat the bugs, uh, this never happened, obviously. Nobody ever suggested eating bugs. There's no Greta. There's no Klaus Schwab. There's, you know, he's talking about <laughs> a plant, as in an industrial plant that makes bugs for consumption, pet food, and human food. I mean, there's already... Pl bug protein and stuff and they're acting like this net this is the weirdest this is the weirdest idea and isn't that use of the word weird their whole like mantra now they're void of their own opinions and their own political platform so much that now the thing to do is just point out things that are irregular and this is a confusing platform that you know liberals have it's not even a platform it's void of a platform criticize what the other people are saying about the government and say, actually, that's weird and not what the government says, so I don't like it. I don't have a plan to replace that idea. And while the government is something I declare that I detest, 
BLM, um, eat the rich, tax the rich. They're doing, they're separating kids at the borders. While I hate the government, I also don't like it when you say anything that opposes the government. What should we do instead? I don't know. So that's what CTV News is doing. The problem is, this was in September. The problem is, in last, was it November? November 28th? The same woman, the same woman on CTV News put out a video about, you know, basically eating bugs. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Dishes and eager contestants vying for a showdown at UBC had all a the showdown of a reality TV cooking show. There were esteemed judges, creative dishes, and eager contestants vying for first place. The only rule, all the food had to be made with bugs. Here's CTV's Sinjin Alexander. Told to keep an open mind, this <laughs> culinary creepy... Told to keep an open mind coming next summer at the Bug Factory. The crawly competition <laughs> I can't even do it. legged ingredients lurking on the table is officially called the Great UBC Bug Bake Off. We suggest the ick factor. You can kind of like see a little bit of the mealworms in there, but it didn't change the overall texture. Four groups are trying to impress... So first impressions here is that the person who talks like this and says it doesn't change the overall texture, th this is not the person whose who's judgments you should be going off of. You know what I'm saying? Judges with their insect-inspired haute cuisine, tacos, ginger cookies, shortbread, pound loaf, cheesecake, delights made with crickets or mealworm. Insects are just like animals that we regularly consume just like beef, chicken, pork. And that's the point of the event. These are That girl next to her did not agree with that. That's the point of the event. Great great player CTV consume has. Consume just like beef, chicken, pork. And that's the point of the event. These are totally edible, nutritious, and packed with protein. So that the negative uh, feeling that people have about insects <laughs> should be lessened or should go away or should be eliminated forever. Oh, forever. Isn't that weird that they want you to listen to foreign people, clearly not born in British Columbia, foreign people from China and, uh, you know, Muslim nations who say you should be eating bugs and acting like it's completely normal. You're the crazy one. This innate reaction you have to eating bugs and it being weird, you're the crazy one for having a problem with that. And they're not even presenting it in a regular way. Like, if you get a steak, they don't just, like, have, like, the eyes of a cow Googling on top of it. Or you have, like, a chicken breast. They don't just have, like, a chick walking across the top. The top. You're just putting pieces of bugs and live bugs in your food. There's a reason why people don't like that. It's because they've culturally and societally have a higher standard. People don't just eat bugs because they think it's great. Okay? That's just not true. You don't eat humans and say it's a delicacy. That's because you're a cannibal. You don't eat bugs in this part of the world in Western co countries because it's a, it's because it's awesome. Those are from societies where they've had no choice but to eat bugs. You see what I'm saying? You tend to eat the tastiest things and the mo and you know the cleanest things, and you don't just be like throw a bunch of bugs in it. And there's, this is just your culture, excuse me. We've seen what happens in India. That's just culture. You know, if you've ever known a person who's Caribbean, the dancing, that's just culture. You don't have to agree with things when they say that's just culture. There are objectively things, you know, eating bugs bad, eating regular chicken beef good. Like, there, there doesn't, it's not this deep. I know it's like, you stupid liberals. There's got to be some evil reason behind this. No, it's just wrong. There's no plot besides wanting you to like the real the real conspiracy behind this is the cost of manufacturing bug meal or putting bugs for consumption is one one thousandth the cost it takes to take care of a cow or a chicken or anything like that. They can just put in a bucket of bugs, grind it up and sell it to you. That's the real conspiracy here. Eat the bugs because we want extreme profit levels. And then you bring in, bring in, the, <laughs> bring in the professors from China and wherever that other woman's from, and say yes, you should be forgetting the uh, the disgustingness of bugs forever, as if they don't live in shit, 
as if they don't, you know, grow and develop out of the ground. Just eat these bugs. It's it's fine. So CTV News puts this out. And, you know, 10 months late, 10 months go by and they act like nothing that nobody's ever talked about eating bugs before. But they talk about it here. They say they take these quotes of our food system is broken and they take out of a quote. There's also an environmental benefit to eating bugs. Rearing them requires less water, feed and space. Yeah. So does eating like a shoe. There's billions of shoes that exist in the world. If you eat that, it'll help the environment. In the end, the chefs who made the shortbread were cricket flour. Uh, who made shortbread with cricket flour were chosen as the winners, and the cookies were sweet and crunchy with just a hint of bug. Well, I don't want a hint of bug. I don't want any type of bug. And the reason why the ones with using cricket flour was chosen as the winners because they didn't have bugs crawling around in it. What, you don't want to eat this chicken breast with just a, a dead chicken just laying on top of it, a, a dead chick? Get out of here. So they were caught saying this 10 months apart. The same woman, by the way, as the broadcaster there, I'd like to point out. That's how vapid those people are. I've worked at a newsroom like that. And these people, they show up, if they're on air at 8, which they were when I was there, show up around 6, 630. They have the printout of their script. They mark it up to change it how they would speak, send it back. The person retypes it for them. And then they go out and read and then they go home. They're not, they're not journalists. They're literally presenters just being the mouthpiece in the, in CTV's case, a gigantic communications corporation that doesn't care about you at all. So this woman, maybe she just doesn't remember the fact that she pushed bugs 10 months ago and now she's looking like an idiot. Not to mention CTV was recently fired or sorry, re recently fired two people for making dishonest cuts. So just, and this was within a week. This is, uh, True North Isaac Lamaru, CTV fires two journalists for manipulating clips of Pierre Polyev, this conservative leader in Canada, and they they, they did a deceptive edit. Their actions violate our editorial standards and are unacceptable. These individuals are no longer members of the CTV news team. That sounds to be like they just moved them around, probably. You know, they said there was an investigation, but in, in like a newsroom, the investigation is a guy who's in charge of them looked at it, s checked to see if it was out of like out of hand or ridiculous. So a speed bike going by, Jesus, um, and probably found that it was you know too egregious. So on the left, we're gonna see the full like it's just an eight second clip, and on the right, we're gonna see um, the portion of the clip they used to say that the conservatives wanted to end, you know, free dental care, free, of course, meaning. That's, that's why. Of course, meaning stolen money. That's why it's time to put forward a motion for a carbon tax election. Sure. That's why we need to put forward a motion. Sure. So they literally just cut off what he's actually talking about for a motion for a carbon tax, ele tax election and say, He's putting forward a motion for uh, to end the dental care program, which, of course, is, you know, uh, making people pay for other people's dentist bills. Like if I went down the street and I took a thousand dollars from this guy a month and went across the street and say, hey, everybody, here's a hundred dollars each. And then when the guy told me to stop stealing from him, I was just like, listen, guys, he wants to take away your thousand dollars a month. I don't know what's wrong with him. That's what the liberals in Canada do is they, when they see that they're going to lose, they put a bunch of uh, theft programs of the taxpayer in place, and then when it goes to get removed, they say, look how mean and evil this person is. He's taking away your dental plan. Lisa needs braces. What are you doing? We have an election in Austria that just happened. Austria, of course, being the place that's not Germany. <laughs> but Germany had this election recently where they had people on the right wing, you know, want less immigration, better economic freedom. They had them win recently. And, you know, the the le left wing media, the liberal media makes it a comparison to Nazi Germany. Of course, every time a right wing person wins, they're doing the same thing in Austria. And I want to position this for you with how there is no, you know, political compass or historical reference that these people have other than World War II, um, and specifically Hitler, because if you ask them, you know, who are the Axis and Allies, about the Japanese campaign, 
uh, the theater there. Anything else what happened after World War II, why it happened, um, Germany's, like, why did Germany lose, all this stuff. They wouldn't know. They just know that anything right-wing connect that to Hitler to make it sound bad That's the because that's the only reference I know. Even though Hitler left-wing national socialist. However, this is from Sky News. Austria's Freedom Party has won Sunday's general election, putting the far-right group in pole position to form a coalition for the first time since World War II. And here's the the windbag. <laughs> Breaking news coming into us from Austria and the far-right Freedom Party uh, appears to have come first in the Austrian parliamentary election. That's a projection by pollster Foresight for ORF TV and a news agency APA in Austria. So the far-right party seems to be, have come first. The party is led by Herbert Kickle, uh, who's tapped into voters' feelings on the cost of living, mm. uh, the war in Ukraine, COVID, and uh, migration. Their feelings on COVID, the cost of living, and migration. Notice she said feelings. You know the difference when you work in news between feelings, reality, what have you. She's saying feelings because she doesn't agree with it, or the person who wrote it, better yet, doesn't agree with it. But again, this is what they do is they, it's got, if anything that I don't agree with is far right. I want to show you guys what this party stands for. Um, and it's a little bit biased even in, in this summary from uh, the Brave browser. They're anti-Islamization, they're anti-immigration, um, including restricting immigration and asylum seekers. I'm guessing they're probably not anti -com completely anti-immigration. They're for national conservatism. They're against the anti-Muslim Brotherhood. That's a good thing. They have far-right connections with other far-right parties across Europe. Uh, the Identity and Democracy Group in the European Parliament, which includes parties like the French National Rally. So the other right-wing groups, everything's far-right. Scapegoating of Muslims. Now, I want to point out to you, when I looked this up earlier, this was different. I'll show you what it's what it showed earlier. You will see that it didn't say scapegoating of Muslims and such like that. It said walking back. But when I looked at it earlier, not as many of the stories have come out. So it'll be interesting to show you exactly how the summary of articles about this have changed. In fact, maybe we can bring it up right now. So you're going to see the difference here in just a, a couple of hours since I looked it up and the differences between the two, <laughs> the two, uh, you know, since, it, since it became bigger news, how, how the narrative has changed amongst left-wing sources. And now they have to say scapegoating and far right connections. Um, so they're in full damage control on that. And I pointed out, on uh, X, a couple of things that I saw about this. But the first being is that this is the only historical reference point they know how to use. And um, it, it's just one of the items in their word bank. Do you remember in elementary school or when you're younger, you get this portion on your report card. It says like, for me, it was the levels were excellent, good, satisfactory, needs improvement. So they select one of those for you. And then they pull out from a word bank, uh, works well with others, needs to do more homework, needs to pay more attention in class. Far right and, you know, World War II, Hitler, Nazi, bigot, all these things, they are part of their word bank that they pull from. They don't know anything else. They don't know... Like, I don't know, throw something out there. The Gulf of Tongan? Do, they th do you think they know what that is? Do you think they know what Passchendaele is? Maybe that's too Canadian. Do you think they know what Normandy is? All these things. They think they... Do you think they know who Achilles is outside of maybe if they've seen Troy? Probably not, but this is what it is. It is a word bank they use to apply to something that they otherwise have absolutely no opinion on. And I, I noted one tweet I saw from a guy named Leonardo who said the far-right party won the election running on a remigration platform. If you want to know more about this extremist policy and how it gained popularity in Europe and the U.S., check out my data, blah, blah, blah. So remigration all of a sudden is an extremist policy. It wasn't a thing before because it was just called 
send the people back where they came from if they've committed a crime they don't need to be there they they fudged their documents they've lied in some way 10 years ago it was not an issue to send somebody back to where they came from if they were not needed in your country and they were on like a migration visa or if they were an illegal immigrant like that's what they're talking about in the United States is send illegal immigrants back send people who are who are not supposed to be there back in Canada it's people who have overstayed a work visa or trying to you know lie on their documents in order for them to get to stay like this isn't uh, some it, it's not far right at all actually it's just having an immigration policy and to them that is exactly what you're not supposed to have so i said there's no actual viewpoint being pushed here just knowing you're wrong and mean if you take issue with mass migrations right-wing views wouldn't exist if we just stopped these far-right platforms and zealots like musk from being mean liars and the person who tweeted that me is exactly right you know it's right this is void of a viewpoint and they think the only reason people have these ideas is because, you know, of misinformation and vague ideas like that, where if Elon Musk didn't buy Twitter, then these people wouldn't be popping up. That's like saying if BLM didn't exist or if the human rights campaign didn't exist or whatever they're called, that black identitarianism and transgenders wouldn't exist. If there weren't groups that supported it, it just wouldn't exist. Maybe that you can make an argument for that. But more than likely, you just you wouldn't hear about it. Like it's not like there weren't transgender people before. You just it wasn't a big deal. So if you if if you're willing to compare the two, then I'd like to hear the argument as to how or why people would be against Im uh, overwhelming unfettered immigration numbers. And if Elon Musk's Twitter didn't exist, you know. Can you tell me that nobody would have a problem with immigration or would you just not hear about it? That's what I'm trying to say. So they don't have a viewpoint. The viewpoint is whatever you say is mean and bad. That's what the viewpoint is. It's void of a viewpoint. Being anti-Trump is not a worldview, as people like to say. That's just a thing that you don't like that you think it makes you sound cute and popular to talk about, Leonardo. So it's really strange to hear people say, Elon Musk is to blame. It has nothing to do with, like, just like the Sky News woman. It's just feelings you're having, just like the Biden administration. Your feelings and Don Lemon, you know, he knows that the economy is doing better because, you know, Screen 5 and his brothel told him so. Hearsay, conjecture, your honor. Not submissible in court. They just know. They don't know how or why. They just know it's, like, totally mean and bad that you are against mass migration. The economy is good, stupid. Don't you get it? They contribute more to the economy than you do. They're better than you. Don't you get it, stupid? Not me, though. I, I will be kept from the gulag when the oh, when the revolution happens because I'm a faithful servant. Nothing ever bad happens to us who are in line with the regime. Even though I hate the regime. Even though the cops are bad, the border agents are bad, Trump's bad, every Republican's bad. Um, everybody but AOC is bad. Be everybody who doesn't support Palestine is bad. But if you dare delineate from the system, you're bad. You're, you're a bigot. That's what I have to say about that. The last thing I want to talk about here is, um, this girl that went to a WNBA game and feared for her life. Now, this is a spectacular story. I hope that everyone, you know, takes heed of this story. It made her feel unsafe. She posted a picture on Twitter at a WNBA playoff game, and she had a problem. You know, this woman said, had a shirt that said ban nails. She's talking about crazy, you know, fake fingernails at a basketball game. There's also some, this is what she said. I'm at the Sun Fever game, and the vibe is horrendous. The woman behind me was mocking Dejane's <laughs> it writes itself. That's what they say. It writes itself. She was mocking Dejane's eyelashes and only stopped when my partner turned around and told her to stop being racist. There's a man in a MAGA hat. Then there's this woman in a bad nail shirt and cartoonishly fake nails. Isn't this just every left winger's dream? There's racism here. My gay partner stopped it. There's a man in a MAGA hat. He's crazy saying bad nails is more racism. She then goes on to say, as she has limited her tweets, luckily, 
we have the quotes of it. The writer gets too much attention on her tweet that it was meant for attention. Now she's got to limit it. Makes sense. I'm going to be writing about my experience tonight. I've never felt unsafe at a WNBA game. Tonight I did. Do we dare look at her profile? I think we're legally obligated to. What happened there? We're legally obligated to. Okay, shouldn't have done it. Regret it. Side shaved hair. Red hair. They them pronouns. Trans flag. What more do you want from me, internet, besides the truth? After a view, and this was in her comments that she now limited. After a viewer pointed out there are no MAGA hats in the photo, she then responded with a photo of a male in a MAGA hat in what appeared to be the lobby, holding a sign that said "Make Basketball Great Again" number twenty-two, which is Caitlin Clark's number. So, <clears throat> she said there was people in the crowd who had MAGA hats on, and somebody said "Prove it," and her response was, "Show guy in lobby that we don't know where this is." I I thought it was a lobby. I assumed it was the lobby. Show guy with sign that could have been at any other time. Don't you believe me? Here's one of them. There was another with a literal MAGA hat that I saw too. The Sun won the game 87-81. She likes topics like sports, gender, and queerness. And she's a they-them. She's written previously for ESPN about non-binary athletes in sports. Let's check that out. Living non-binary in a binary sports world. While many trans athletes have become political lightning rods. Non-binary people like the WNBA's Leishia Clarendon are out of left are left out of the conversation in a sex segregated sports world. Where do they fit in? They fit in with the sex that they actually are. That's the type of writing that this girl's done. Um So she did end up writing about it on her Substack, which is just a painful read. I encourage you all to go read it for you know what do they call it? Something in learning. <sighs> Truth and reconciliation is what we should call it, but I don't know. Uh, for your own benefit, basically go write it. She wrote about the incident, complained that queer or trans, uh, queer whether you're queer or trans or a person of color, you're viewed uh, as biased in writing your own community. So she's basically complaining that people find transgender people or people who identify themselves as queer as biased when they're writing about other transgender people. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty obvious by this point you are. This is not like some, this is not some sort of made up thing. And you like how she puts in person of color, this trope that they always want to do is where being a trans, being a trans person is just like being a slave. You guys, that's what, that's what we all truly believe. They've had just as bad. Um, they were put in internment camps. None of the, like, this is where it is. This is where the community is. She expanded by saying the coverage Caitlin Clark has received in 2024 is rooted not only in racism, but in the homophobic tropes of the predatory lesbian and the queer villain. What is the predatory lesbian and queer villain trope? How, what literature have I missed that in? Now there's a lot of homosexuality in literature and historical documents. Well, documents in historical literature. But I'm not quite familiar with the predatory lesbian and the queer villain. I missed that episode of the star wars acolyte maybe it was in there she goes on to say the number of times i read wnba coverage that seems like it was written by someone who frankly hates black women with a capital b is inexcusable especially in a league that is over 80 percent black she then said i am deeply uncomfortable with the dynamic on the indiana fever in which the black players are responsible for de-escalating the white women who can't keep their tempers. My guess is this girl wants to date some WNBA players. That's just me throwing it out there. I don't know about you guys, but when you've got uh, somebody who's writing stuff about a sport nobody really watches, unless it's Caitlin Clark, talks about how Caitlin Clark's fans are all racist, say that she had to stop a racist guy with her lesbian partner, says that uh, all everybody who writes about the stuff is racist and biased, uh, is perceived as racist or bias and that it's actually the white women's fault that this is all happening. I'm going to go ahead and say that this isn't a person you really want to, you really want to read. I don't think you're going to get much out of it. This is what I think about that. And, and, and she was in fear when she was at this game. Now I don't want to say the WNBA is terrible, 
but what I do want to say is that they've gotten more attention that they've ever than they've ever gotten, but somehow they're still losing money and somehow they're more hated than ever. So what does that say? A person get and, and this is not because you know they're they're running for president of the United States. If I'm going to become the the world's biggest bowler, you would hope that um, all the attention I'm getting is at least somewhat positive. But as the spotlights have been shined on the WNBA players, they have complained about private jets. They complained about a white girl shooting it from really far away. They've complained about pe- other people saying that their nails are really long. They had one girl that went to jail for smuggling narcotics into a different country. She's complained about America. And I don't know if these are the best things to say when you're hoping that your league gets uh, gets more attention and makes more money. They're still in the hole, still subsidi- subsidized by the, the NBA. But I don't know if these girls have the PR training. It sounds to me like they have a little bit more of a DEI training. All right, when the spotlight comes on, blame white people, say that being gay is the greatest thing in the world, and then say, you're racist for not supporting my industry. That's the tactics that they're going for. And this writer is going for the same tactics. Um, Nobody's paying attention to me ever, which is something she says in her writing, that her and other writers of the WNBA have never gotten attention before. Now when they do get all the attention, or at least some attention, shut down the Twitter for the remarks, say everybody's racist and anti-gay, and, you know, and if you don't continue watching, then you're a bijo, a big ot. What better way to get more eyes on your sport? Call everyone racist and anti-gay. Come on over. Come on down. Have you ever gone to a, a, a football game or a basketball game and just hoped that some some uh, unattractive lesbian would just yell at you? Well, you can get that if you're in the WNBA. If you are, If for some reason you're a young man, and you're just like, you know what? The WNBA is pretty good. Caitlin Clark is showing me that the WNBA is pretty good. Let me grab three of my friends. We'll go spend $10 total between the four of us on tickets. We'll buy beer. We'll buy popcorn. We'll sit really close. We'll have a great time. Sincerely have a good time. And then you're sitting there and you make a, c- a complaint about how long some girl's nails are and why you think that's detrimental to her basketball performance. As you might say that about a person who's skating with a dress on. You might say your skates might get caught in that. Well, your nails might break from the basketball. And as you're saying this, um, a fat lesbian, <laughs> let's be honest here, let's be honest here, a somewhat husky girl with red hair and her partner turn around and call you a racist and then want to say that you made her feel unsafe by wearing a hat. Are you going to want to go back to it, especially when you find out that she represents, at least in some regard, the journalistic ethics of that league and they allow her to get in close with the coverage. I guess anybody should be allowed to cover it, but like this isn't a one-off. I mean, the entire league acts like this and they, and they wonder why nobody wants to go. So I'm, what I'm saying is to connect this all together is uh, put them on the bug diet. Let the transgender athletes into their league and then once now, now that you've gone all the way with your ideology and not just half of the way, because their ideology states the men have to be able to play with the women, then we shall see. Then we shall see if the change will come. Do you want Leah Thomas in your change room? Are you getting the best meals on your private flights with the bug proteins? These are the changes that must be made, WNBA or else you are also bigots. You are anti-trans, you are anti-bug eating, which is against the environment, and of course, the natural order of things. Turn it up, Jordan.